Hey, this is a video about murderers and general nastiness, so if you are a sensitive viewer, you should probably be prepared or watch with a friend or something. There's a lot of misinformation floating around the internet about snuff films. Snopes even claims that they don't exist. So Rob Dyke and I both made videos this week about the myth of murders caught on camera. You can go over to his channel and watch a video about a legendary Russian serial killer, but first I'm gonna talk about the hotly contested history of the snuff film. Sleep well. If you're a sheltered baby boy from the suburbs like me, the trailer for 8mm might be the first time you ever heard of a snuff film. Private Detective Tom Wells is one of the only people who has seen it. Joel Schumacher's 1999 film propelled this urban legend into the mainstream, at least if you were me in grade 9 at the time. If you haven't seen it or you don't remember, this movie is dark as hell. And for Schumacher, that's something of a departure from the previous film that he made. All right, everyone. Chill. 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 At its core, 8mm asked a question that many of us have. Are snuff films, a real movie depicting a real death made for entertainment, real? He has been hired to discover. All I want is to know that this atrocity is false. I want the proof of it. I'm gonna save you a few minutes in case you're in a hurry. The answer in 1999 was probably no. Not that all manner of horrifying violent crimes hadn't been documented on film, but there was no secret underground economy of real life murder films. Dude, that looks so real. Men of blood. You don't think it was real? OJ left more blood than that on the Bronco. The answer today is oh. definitely yes. He's left behind a bizarre and extensive trail on the internet with sickening videos and blogs. This is part of a video posted online, allegedly shot by the killer, allegedly showing the murder. So with all of the spoilers out of the way, let's start at the start. The myth of the snuff film emerged in the 1960s as the details of the Manson family murders came to light. The family's leader, Charles Manson, is jailed here. It is expected that he will be charged in the Tate murders. The real details of the nine murders ultimately ascribed to the Manson family are grisly enough, but one book in particular, Ed Sanders' The Family, created the rumor that some of these murders had been filmed for what they called brutality or snuff films. The birth of the snuff film legend. I am my mother's toy. The purposefully lo-fi 1984 Manson family movies recreates these fictitious films, convincingly enough that it's often circulated as a legit Manson snuff film to bolster the claims of the book. Warning, you are about to see scenes of a film said to be the most controversial in the history of motion pictures. 1976's snuff furthered the legend by purporting to be a real, you know, Originally titled Slaughter, it was renamed in an attempt to drum up controversy around its mysterious South American origins. This is the movie that could only have been made in South America, where life is cheap. Its filmmakers staged fake protests at screenings, and even though it was debunked as an actual snuff film, legend maintained that its final verite-style scene was an actual murder. <laughs> Watch yourself. Let me go! No, ma'am. No, ma'am, I'm not. You're not serious. You're not really gonna do it. Spoiler, he does. The New York District Attorney actually had police check to make sure that that woman was still alive. Which, if you spent any time watching crappy horror on VHS as a teen, is a bit of trivia that you probably associate with this sick puppy. Cannibal Holocaust. Not a snuff film. All the good scenes are way too realistically gory for me to show here in good conscience, but it's pretty easy to find online despite the fact that it's still banned in several countries. Why? Because people truly thought the actors had been killed. And I've watched the scene over and over with a girl impaled on a pole, and we thought that has to be real. Like, of course they took a dead body and just shoved a pole on it. It's, it's unbelievable, it's, it's horrible. That scene is one of the grossest images ever you know, recorded for any film. The film was confiscated 10 days after its initial showing in Italy. The director was arrested and charged with obscenity and murder. 
All of the actors were contractually bound to not appear in any other films or commercials or media for a year after its release in order to enhance cannibal holocaust realism. So you can see that this was a problem. Eventually the actors came forward and proved that they were very much alive, so this is not a snuff film. But don't worry, it's super messed up. Oh, good lord. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's horrible. Everyone's third favorite Estevez played a critical role in the other big snuff snafu when Charlie Sheen actually called the FBI in 1991 to report what he thought was a real murder in the film Flower of Flesh and Blood, the second movie in the Japanese guinea pig series. The FBI checked, not a snuff film. But in case it's not abundantly clear right now, people really wanted to believe in snuff films. They wanted to believe that there was a secret underground market for these illicit reels, and that they could actually be released commercially by the right moral degenerate. I know what you're thinking. One of the unique characteristics of man is that he is the only animal on earth that kills for greed. Faces of Death, all seven of them, are not snuff films. The infamous compilation series that you probably watched in someone's basement and felt super weird about mostly features recreations alongside actual footage of animals being killed and news footage of real accidents. Trying to find two clips that I could show in this episode was such a bummer that I just need to look at something else for a second. Which brings us to our terrible present day. If the definition of a snuff film is a movie showing a real death produced for entertainment, then yes, snuff films now exist. Tonight, a prime suspect, a butchered victim, and more body parts sent in the mail. We believe that the suspect and the victim, they knew each other. In the past, snuff films would have had to be traded physically. But now, we barely consume any physical media. We torrent movies and stream TV shows. And via sites like Gore Grish and Best Gore, we can stream snuff. He's left behind a bizarre and extensive trail on the internet with sickening videos and blogs. We're not new here, so I don't need to talk about how much sick shit exists on the internet. But when Luca Magnata began promoting a video called One Lunatic, One Ice Pick 10 days prior to the murder he would ultimately film and send to multiple gore sites, he created what might be the first true snuff film. Promoted, hyped, and distributed all in an attempt to gain some truly fucked version of notoriety. Magnotta is known for posting videos in the dark corners of the internet of kittens being tortured and killed. Police have obtained a video they believe could be the murder victim. We know many high profile crimes are committed by someone seeking fame. And we know that the internet can be an easy route to fame. It seems crazy that it's taken so long for the myth of snuff films to become a commercially circulated reality, but now that they have, I have a hard time imagining that this is the end. Dog me again, please. What do you think? Are we doomed? Oh my God, we're, we're just so doomed. Uh, do you think that snuff films were always real? Let us know what you think in the comments and be sure to include with your comment a GIF or a video of an animal doing something cute because I think we all could use it. Subscribe for new episodes of This Exists every week. Be excellent to each other, especially after this video. Rob Dyke was one of the first established YouTubers to be really nice about This Exists, so please go over to his channel right now and check out his half of this collaboration. He does amazing, creepy stuff, strange stuff every week, so subscribe to his channel if you aren't just here because he told you to come here, in which case, good on you, and I hope one day you find peace and can sleep. Normally this is the part of the video where we talk about a handful of comments from last week's episode, but last week's episode does not exist on the internet anymore. It was all about weird SoundCloud, or SoundClown as many people hate to call it, but it was flagged for violating copyright and taken down by the gods, who may change their mind, but in the interim, it's just not there. Hope you liked this video. If you want to know more about what happened, go to the This Exists Facebook page. There's a link in the description and a link on the channel. We kind of break down the whole thing. It's mostly hilarious, except that I think it's a really good episode. 